attacking the nation headlong by adding human approach to its tactics at steaming the tide. This formed part of submission at the stakeholders meeting of the first annual security summit and public relations conference of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps in Abeokuta, Ogun State's capital. Anthony Gandonu has the details. At the Security Summit and Public Relations Conference, a communication expert and former Dean School of Communication, Lagos State University, Lasso, Professor Lai Osho stressed the need for security agents in the country to always engage more on research to gain the public trust and mutual respect for the citizens as some of the ways out of the current insecurity facing the country. There must be some kind of cooperation between the security agencies and the ordinary members of the public. They need intelligence, they need information. If there is no cooperation, they cannot get such information. They cannot get such intelligence because they can't be everywhere. Ogun State Commandant, Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, Hamid Abodouni, called for civil military relationship between the security officers and the general public, adding that except there is restoration of the confidence of members of the public on security operatives, insecurity will still remain a challenge in the society. Even when we want to offer them any help, they will, could be resistant to whatever you want to give to them. So there's the need for us to bring our personnel together and even the personnel of other agencies together to ensure that we know how to improve um, our image. Special advisor to Ogun State Governor on Security, retired AIG Olushola Abu Sabur, and the chairman of the occasion, who is also the Tuwulade of Akiale Oba Olufemi Ogunleye, described the summit as apt, especially now that the country is faced with myriad of security challenges. Following the crisis which resulted to death and destruction of property in communities in Essien Udim local government area of Akwa Ibom State, the wife of Akwa Ibom State's governor, Martha Dom Emanuel, donates relief items to internally displaced persons in the community. The Catholic Bishop of Ecotec Mene Diocese, Bishop Camillus Uma of St. Anne's Cathedral, Ifuro, where the displaced person of Essien Udim are taking refuge, received the items. Emedion Umo reports. Not fewer than 5,000 persons from the 12 communities in Essien Udom local government area were displaced during the crisis in the area. To cushion the plight of the displaced persons, the government has donated 200 bags of rice, 10 bags of gari, 10 bags of beans, 5 cartons of seasoning, 12 bags of salt, among others, to them at St. Anne's Cathedral in Ikotekwene local government area. Thank my Excellency very, very sincerely. You have church and you have premises to get them home for the people that have been seriously traumatized. Also ensure that uh, uh, most of their facilities that were destroyed are also fixed. The challenge now before the displaced persons is how to return back to their communities after their properties have been destroyed. Emedi Omo, NTA News. The Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development has flagged up the disbursement of 20,000 Naira cash grants to 28,000 rural women in Cross River State. Paul Abel reports that beneficiaries are the poor and vulnerable drawn from the 18 local government areas of the state. The National Social Investment Program, NSIP, established in 2015 by the President Muhammadu Buhari-led administration, is one of the largest in Africa, with over $1 billion earmarked annually. So far, more than 12 million households of the poorest of the poor and the vulnerable, including persons with disabilities, have benefited from these interventions. For Ita Asoko Eyo and other beneficiaries, the intervention by federal government is commendable as the grant will help improve their living standards. I will use the money and buy more oil and sell. To give them that enablement to do to others as they did to me. I really thank them sincerely for what they have done for us. Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management, and social development. Sadia Umark Farouk, represented by the national cabinet of the program, and the state government say the measure is to drastically reduce poverty in Nigeria. We believe that this 20,000 will become bigger amounts of money. It will 
re-energize their small businesses and possibly employ not only them but employ others and create wealth. I expect them to do exceedingly well. I've always said it, the future of Nigeria is women. If this trend is sustained by the federal government, it is hopeful that by the year 2030, over 100 million will be taken out of poverty. In Calabar, Paul Abel, NTA News. The 2013 Water Resources Master Plan has the potential to revolutionize the entire water sector in Nigeria. However, since its approval by the Federal Executive Council in 2014, new trends have emerged in how to fine-tune it to accommodate these new realities to enable the master plan have optimal impact in the sector is the focus of a technical workshop for key players in Abuja. Kelvin Ebonwaye reports. The National Water Resources Master Plan is an integrated initiative involving development, utilization and management of the water sector developed by the Federal Ministry of Water Resources in collaboration with technical partners. Its main objective is to coordinate availability of water for domestic, industrial and agricultural purposes, but current challenges of sanitation, flood and impact of climate change have necessitated a review to make it conform with modern realities. This workshop brought together officials of the Federal Ministry of Water Resources and technical partners working on different projects critical to actualization of the mandate of the master plan to sharpen their skills and make impulse towards a review and implementation strategies. The roadmap has to ensure that there are adequate strategies and approaches to ensure synergy amongst all the stakeholders so that at the end of the day, the implementation of the roadmap is seamless. The mandate we're supposed to deliver as water resources, not just only for water drinking. We're talking about cleaning of the environment, sanitation, hydropower, transportation, flood control, among others. How the master plan can effectively work in the face of the expected National Water Resources Bill when passed into law was also a major focus for the experts. In Abuja, Kelvin Ebonwaye, NTA News. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has unveiled to the government and people of Lagos State the bounties they will derive when the federal government's digital switchover is launched in the state in two weeks' time. The minister reeled out what television viewers will enjoy at the Lagos House Marina, where he was received in audience by Lagos State Governor Babajide Sowolu. Anthony Fawson reports. I'm sure every has a lot of steam with your, with your printer as well. With the presentation of a set-top box which will serve as a decoder for free TV viewing to the Lagos State Governor, the Information and Culture Minister said Lagos, with more than 5 million homes each with a television, viewers will have unhindered access to television programs of their choice at no cost. Lagosians can also cash in on the push video on demand capability of the free TV platform to access premium blockbuster Nollywood movies from the comfort of their homes. Right now, sir, we have uh, some those who enjoy this uh, free TV, you can order for films directly. Nollywood, uh, Nollywood uh, films, the one you want to watch. And this is going to cut, you know, uh, arrest this issue of piracy. Explaining to the governor the journey of the DSO so far since 2016, Lagos State, he maintained, is very central to the success of the project given its population size and cosmopolitan nature, as well as its position as the hub of the creative industry, which is a key component of content generation, and the state government, he said, will equally leverage on its advantages. The free TV platform can be used to broadcast information on Lagos activities to all viewers. The minister used the opportunity to solicit for the promotion of the Lagos digital switchover by supporting the process with enlightenment. Governor Samuelu expressed appreciation to the minister for recognizing the potentials of Lagos State in making the DSO project a success. In terms of um, communication on the TVs and also, and we need to move to digital. I think it's up and it is, um, it speaks to the reality of where we are today. Um, 
digital switch over, like you've called it, I think is long overdue. It's long overdue because um, everywhere in the world, technology um, is now a fundamental and a critical you know, um, deliverable of government. And it presents an opportunity for its citizens to have access both at the local, national, and international reach. April 29th has been scheduled for the official switch on of Lagos State to the DSO platform. In Lagos, Anthony Forson, NTA News. This is Panorama on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. Let's go for a break. When we return, more stories. Stay tuned. The vaccine offers hope for a safe country free of coronavirus. I urge all state governments, traditional and religious leaders, to take the lead in the mobilization effort within their environment and spheres of influence. I similarly urge all eligible Nigerians to present themselves and be vaccinated in accordance with the order of priority already mapped out at the various authorized designated centers only. Nigeria Center for Disease Control has confirmed 60 new cases of COVID-19 in the country. In the latest figures released by the center, Lagos has 22 new infections, Rivers 15, Bayelsa 7, Ogun 4, Akwa Ibom 3, Oshun 2, while Kano and Eboi have one new infection each. With this, Nigeria now has 164,000 207 confirmed cases of COVID-19, out of which 154,325 were treated and discharged, and 2,061 persons have died of the virus, unfortunately. Authorities in Kaduna State are adopting a biosafety approach in containing the spread of bird flu. Director of Veterinary and Livestock Services Parachi Sam Zakaria stated this while speaking with NTA News on the outbreak of the disease in the state. Achari Maxwell reports. The outbreak of bird flu has been established in two farms in Kaduna State, one in Sabon Garizaria and another in Tafa, killing a number of birds. Samples have been collected from the farms for analysis and the results are still being awaited. We also want to call on uh, farmers not just to allow anybody to walk into their farms. They need to control. There has to be crowd control. Whoever comes in has to observe uh, those biosecurity protocols. Before the outbreak of the flu, in some neighboring states, the Kaduna State Minister of Agriculture has activated quick response mechanism through stakeholders' engagement to prevent the spread of the disease. Uh, Off-takers of our eggs and uh, beds too are highly being controlled because the minimum distance we keep between the farm and the place where we give them all this is our 1,500 meters. Experts say if the biosafety protocols are adhered to, Kaduna may be close to keeping the virus away from the state. In Kaduna, Achari Maxwell, NTA News. Following federal government's directive to states to meet World Health Organization's agenda to eradicate dog-mediated human rabies by the year 2030, Oshun State government has flagged off free mass anti-rabies vaccination campaign for pets, animals, including dogs, that are carriers of the virus. Wasiu Rauf reports that the move is to reduce incidences of rabies in the states. The anti-rabies vaccination is for three months old dogs and above and other animals in that category. And according to the statistics, 70,000 people die of rabies annually in the world as dog being a companion animal accounts for 99% of human deaths resulting from contracts of rabies through bite and saliva 
of the rabid animals. Hence, the need for free mass dog vaccination across the nooks and crannies of Oshun State. The anti-rabies vaccination campaign, which is slated for a month, target both local and foreign dogs in the state to get vaccinated simultaneously in the eighth station of the Veterinary Services Department in Oshun State. So I vaccinated four of my dogs at zero costs. That's the kudos to the state on that. So this is the first time I'm vaccinating my dog. While flagging off the program, the state commissioner for agriculture explained that Ocean State government will complement 3,500 doses of vaccines from federal government to achieve at least 70 percent target. So we'll be looking to also pick up drugs on the streets and cats and vaccinate them. So we're going to be covering up 70 to 80 percent coverage in the state. If your dog is not vaccinated and it bites somebody, you are in danger of being penalized. You can go to jail. The anti-rabies vaccine has one year lifespan in Oshugu, Wasirov, NT News. Not done with health matters yet, Anambra State Governor Willie Obiano has presented checks worth over 288 million naira to the management of 69 faith-based healthcare facilities in the state. And Mkalu has details. Is to continue to improve facilities at hospitals. While Catholic Faith, which has 42 recognized hospitals, received the sum of 197 million 750,000 naira, Anglican Faith, with 26 hospitals, got the sum of 61 million 250,000 naira, and Pentecostal Mission Hospitals, giving the sum of 30 million naira. Governor Obiano, who highlighted his achievements in the health sector, announced that he has given faith-based organizations in the state more than 2 billion naira since the inception of his administration, while urging management of the hospitals to reciprocate government gesture. Before now, the best hospitals you can go to are faith-based. I also encourage the uh, faith-based facilities. So put this money to judicious use. We, we have a, a, a forum where we monitor things and make sure that the money will be well used. So we don't have fear that what is given to our Catholic Church in Anambra State will be used well. This is not the first time. And I want to appreciate him for his passion concerning health. So I'm very happy. We are going to use it judiciously and um, put it where it's supposed to be. The event attracted people from all walks of life in Oka, Ndemkalo, NTN News. As part of measures to complement federal government's efforts towards the containment of the spread of COVID-19, the Ansaruddin Society has held a public lecture to disabuse the minds of the public on the myth about the pandemic and its vaccination. Hawa Gimba attended the 26th annual Ramadan and special prayers for the nation from where she now reports. It was gathering of faithful from different parts of the FCT to the annual Ramadan lecture, which had been the tradition of Ansaruddin Society, Abuja branch. Considering the challenges poised by the effects of COVID-19 pandemic to cooperate in business world economically, guest speaker elaborated on the theme, Islamic perspective on COVID-19 and vaccination. Sheikh Muhyiddin Ajani Bello reiterated the need for everyone to be vaccinated. According to scholars in Islamic history, the world has plagues and pandemic, just like what is being experienced with the coronavirus pandemic globally. Hence, there is need for people to adhere to the guidelines to curtail the spread. We are part of societies. Countries all over the world are taking it. We should also take it. COVID-19 is real. And this is the way we are going to mobilize and sensitize the Nigerian populace. We just have to take that fascination because it will help us. That is very important that we should take the vaccine because we need to save life. We need to prevent this pandemic COVID-19. We don't want it in our society. A special prayer was observed for peace and well-being of the nation. Hawagimba, NTA News. To sharpen the writing skills of staff officers and operational and non-operational correspondences in all commands, the Nigerian Air Force Special Operations Command 
has conducted a one-day workshop for officers from the rank of squadron leader and below in Bochi, Muazu Hassan reports that the training is for the 2021 first quarter. Resource person of the workshop, Air Commodore Gambo Adamu Imba, took time to deliver paper on the rules of and convention of service writing, service correspondence, and signal message. Stop the common forms of service correspondence in the regional airport cities. And then to achieve this aim, I will highlight and discuss some basic concepts and convention of service writing across the board. Issues of minor SD errors, issues of major SDs, translating your bosses' ideas into written form. The workshop, no doubt, has helped tremendously in the capacity building of our personnel. At the end of the workshop, participants were subjected to writing exercise to evaluate their understanding of the workshop. In Bauchi, Moaz Hassan, NT News. Time now to join Olumide Egontola for more on sports. The Nigeria Olympic Committee and Commonwealth Games Nigeria has organized a Keep Fit program at the National Stadium Lagos. The objective of the event is to create awareness on the importance of regular exercise like jogging, to keep fit and maintain healthy body weight. It is in line with the Commonwealth Games vision of building peaceful and prosperous nation through sporting activities. The message is that you must continue to keep yourself active. You have to be fit to be a podium athlete. In volleyball, the Nigeria Volleyball Referees Association has awarded the coaches of two states that paraded budding talents from the grassroots and the just concluded 20th National Sport Festival in Edo. The chairman of the Nigeria Volleyball Referees Association, Samuel Timothy, while presenting cash awards to Walid Badamusi of Kwara Mill Team and Vincent Inogo of Cardinal Female Team, said the award will encourage other coaches to discover more boarding talents in their areas. All the coaches are good. Yes. So, as a kind of appreciation to them and to do more. In football, attention of football fans shifted to Djibouti this weekend with the commencement of the Nigerian Women Football League Super Six competition. Hostilities will begin on Monday with three matches. Winner of the Super Six based on points garnered will be crowned the 2021 League Champions and will represent Nigeria at the inaugural edition of the Women's Cup Champions League. In the Nigerian National League, Delta Force defeated Dynamite Force 3-0 in one of the matches played Saturday. Still on football, Kwara United beat Abia Warriors via Lungu in one of the matches of the NPFL La Liga Under-15 competition played Saturday. And from the English Premier League, West Ham's Champions League hopes were dealt a blue when Newcastle boosted their hopes of staying in the league with a dramatic 3-2 win. In the England FA Cup, Chelsea are through to the final for the 15th time after a long victory over Manchester City. With sports update, Ulum De Gutola, NT News. That's Panorama. Remember to be a star and connect with the NTA in the stand against rape and rapists. I'm Ayodeji. Mike Indy, good afternoon. <laughs> Ignatius will call for deadline 360. A closer system of government to the people over the years, observers say, has been involved in several. The Bagi Adorable Marriage Festival remains a sacred obligation. For deadline 360, Justina Etab. Effort language, otherwise known as Eco Effort. It's a native language of... Thank you for joining us. I am Lydia Odije. I never get this kind of thing. All I hear is... This year has been quite awful. Nobody 